Hi everyone, Ryan Jackson here, hoping you're having a great day. We're going to continue on with the 100 days of 2023 National Electrical Code changes. We're still in Article 406 for one more video, and we're going to talk about 406.12 tamper-resistant receptacles. Quite a few changes here. Let's see what they are. All right, so 406.12, tamper-resistant receptacles. The rules for tamper-resistant receptacles were clarified and expanded. I love the clarifications that they made here. All right, so 406.12, been in the code since 2008, nothing new here. All 15 and 20 amp, 125 and 250 volt non-locking receptacles in the following locations uh, must be listed as tamper resistant. Now you'll see some underlined yellow text here, and that's simply saying instead of you know every three years changing it from you know one, two, and three, or one through five, one through six, you know, uh, let's just say the following locations. That way we don't have to keep on updating it every three years. So the following locations need to have tamper resistant receptacles. Item one, and this is really where it all started back in 08, is dwelling units. So dwelling units boathouses, manufactured mobile homes, including their garages, accessory buildings, and common areas. This has driven me insane ever since 08. For 15 years, I've hated the way this section talks about dwellings because it says dwelling units in the location specified in 210.52. Well, 210.52 talks about the required receptacle. So if I'm installing a, a receptacle that's not required, does that mean it doesn't have to be tamper resistant? Well, you could make that debate, and it's a really ridiculous loophole that they left in for a very long time, and, and people have tried to get that changed in the code for the last 15 years, and finally they did it. So forget the areas specified in 210.52. It applies to dwelling units. Perfect. It now applies to boat houses as well, around a dwelling unit. So there you go. Uh, not too many houses with boat houses, but, you know, if you have one, then you got to have tamper resistant receptacles out there. Manufactured mobile homes, including garages, accessory buildings, common areas. So mainly a clarification here and just kind of closing a loophole, although we did out add boat, boat houses as well. 406.125, I really like the change here because a lot of people were misunderstanding what this rule said. So in clinics, outpatient facilities, and medical and dental offices, Receptacles in the following locations have to be tamper resistant. Item A is business offices that are accessible to the public. Now, people were reading that and really screwing it up because they were saying, okay, business offices, like where mom and dad go to work every day. And, you know, well, no, it, it's not business offices. It's business offices of clinics, outpatient facilities, medical and dental office buildings. So you had a lot of people saying that every business office in the country had to be tamper resistant, and that is not the case. It's only the business offices in those specific areas. So you go to see the dentist, and I mean, honestly, I, I like I believe in tamper resistant receptacles. I, I think they should be in the code. Um, do we really need it in the business office of a dental office? I mean, are we trying to protect kids or are we trying to protect the dentist? I mean, is he in there sticking a scalpel in the receptacle? So, I don't know, maybe you're in there and you're going over the results of your examination and your, your kids are in the background. You know, anyway. Lobbies and waiting areas I can definitely see. So here in the photograph, I have the waiting area of my dentist's office in Salt Lake. So you, you go in there with you and the kids and, and maybe they choose you first and you go back and get your cavities fixed and what have you. And the kids are in the waiting room screwing around. Fine, no problem. Item C, sleeping rooms of nursing homes and limited care facilities. I'm okay with that one too. You know, you, you take the kids to visit grandma or grandpa, somebody that's in a nursing home, and maybe the kids are in there, you know, sticking their keys in the, in the receptacle. Fine, not a problem. Item six, uh, this is still not written in particularly great code language, so I hope you don't mind my paraphrasing here. Uh, places where people await transportation, as well as gymnasiums, fitness centers, skating rinks, auditoriums. Fine. Uh, you're in here at the fitness center, you know, getting your, getting your cardio on or whatever, and somebody's over there sticking things in the outlet. Fine. No big deal. Item eight. I think this is a good expansion. Residential care slash assisted living facilities. So, you know, it, it's an unfortunate reality, and, and 
fortunately, I haven't had somebody really close to me uh, get diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's. I mean, I, I've had some, you know, distant relations, and it's it's terrible. You know, it, it's just it's absolutely horrible. But there are documented incidents of senior citizens that are in residential care or assisted living that start behaving like children. You know, when you when you have Alzheimer's disease, you you tend to go backwards, and uh, and boy, there's there's incidents of senior citizens hurting themselves. So we definitely should have tamper resistant receptacles in these areas. And if you're visiting, right, you might have the you know you're you're talking to your parent or your loved one, and your kids are over in the other room screwing around. You know, I get it. Social and substance rehabilitation centers and group homes. Uh, you know, I, I got to be kind of careful here. I mean, you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, uh, if we're talking social and, and substance rehabilitation, you, you might be talking about people that are, that are trying to injure themselves. So we don't want to make it any easier for that. So kind of a, a delicate issue there. Item nine, very much in the same vein foster care facilities, nursing homes, psychi psychiatric hospitals. Uh, you could almost lump items eight and nine together, at least as far as the intent is concerned. And I don't think too many people are gonna argue that we probably ought to have extra protection when we're talking about psychiatric hospitals. The other area that they added, item 10, uh, areas of agricultural buildings that are accessible to the public and any common areas. Okay, so, I guess you, you go to a barn to take a tour and or they have a, like a pumpkin patch or a corn maze, things like that. So there you go. Areas of agricultural buildings that are accessible to the public. I'm not sure how often this really applies, probably not that often. So it's not saying that every receptacle around the barn and the farm needs to be tamper resistant. It, it's not saying that at all. It's areas that are accessible to the public, which, you know, a lot of agricultural buildings or farms don't have any areas that are accessible to the public. And if that's the case, this change doesn't change anything. We still have the same exception, made a, a little bit of a revision, but not much. So the exception, tamper-resistant receptacles are not required for the following. Item one, receptacles that are more than five and a half feet above the floor. Look, this issue was always about protecting kids from themselves. Back in 2008, when this rule got into the code, uh, it was the result of a 10-year study that NEMA did. And boy, this was one of the most well-substantiated code changes that I ever saw when they first put tamper-resistant receptacles into the code. They, you know, you hate to say it, but they, they had the bodies. They showed the injuries. There were 28,000 emergency room visits in a 10-year study that was put together from kids putting things in receptacles. 28,000 emergency room visits. It was about seven kids every single day. So more than five and a half feet above the floor, you don't need tamper resistant receptacles. Probably not gonna have kids climbing ladders, you know, and going up to the garage door opener. Now, in the photograph, I'm showing a residential application. I'm not telling you what to do, all right? Spend your money how you're gonna spend your money. But if it's me wiring a house, there is no chance that I'm gonna carry around 10 boxes of tamper resistant receptacles plus five receptacles that aren't <laughs> you know so like okay put one up there and, and and what do you end up saving a buck 50 on the entire house so again not telling you what to do but i'm not i'm not going to roll the dice and and try and make sure my guys put the right receptacles in the right locations we're just putting them out in throughout the house item two you also don't need tamper resistant receptacles for receptacles that are part of a luminaire or appliance. All right, so here we've got this old school light here. That receptacle does not need to be tamper resistant. The next one, item three. You also do not need tamper resistant receptacles if the receptacle is a single receptacle, not a duplex, but a single receptacle, not readily accessible, and in the space that's designated for an appliance that's not easily moved. Looks like I got a little bit of a typo there, a couple of extra words. Hope you'll pardon me. So, yeah, makes sense. Uh, here in the photograph, we've got a receptacle that's behind the TV. Now, if we wanted to take advantage of this exception, the receptacle would have to be singular. And, of course, a singular receptacle costs more than a tamper-resistant duplex receptacle. So, <laughs> again, I'm not telling you how to spend your money, but uh, I don't think I'm going to spend too much time concerning myself with these exceptions. Uh, the one part of the exception, actually, that, that I think is worth looking at is non-grounding receptacle replacements. If you have an old two-wire receptacle and you're replacing it with a new two-wire receptacle, 
that does not need to be tamper resistant uh, because they don't make tamper resistant two wire receptacles. They're just, they're just not a thing. And the, the amount of people that we would be saving by requiring that is just, it, it's so small that it's not even worth having. So you've got an exception. You can replace like with like and not worry about tamper resistant receptacles. All right, so that's it for 406.12. 406.12 is a big section, so it's always a, a long subject when we talk about it. We'll see how they expanded in 2026, but for 2023, those are your changes. We'll see you on the next video when we get into Article 408. Hope to see you soon.